Hi, this is Mike Maloney, and I've got a really important gold and silver update for you. Uh, yesterday, Nick Laird of ShareLinks.com uh, sent me some charts of gold measured in different currencies, and it reminded me of a report that I had given a few months ago. Uh, and in that report, I uh, measured gold against some of the world's major currencies. So what I've done here is I've updated that report and added Nick's charts to it, and uh, I think you're going to see something very, very interesting here. Uh, this is gold in the entire bull market since the beginning of this century. So you can see there's a minimum in 2001. There was another one back in the year 2000. Uh, and then gold took off in its big bull market. Peaked in 2011 and has been inside of a cyclical bear market inside of this big secular bull market. I firmly uh, believe that uh, you'll see gold reverse here and there will be an eventual peak that is just far, far higher uh, than uh, these prices here of uh, even the $1,800 an ounce uh, peak. Now, I do believe that we're going into a short-term deflation first and you could see uh, gold go down below 1000 But will you be able to get physical You know, when, when gold is bottoming? I doubt it very much. Uh, recently, we went through a silver shortage, and because silver prices dropped too low, their paper IOU price, the paper silver that's traded on the commodities exchanges, went uh, too low, and that caused demand for physical to go really high. So silver didn't really go along for this ride, taking a big dip down. Uh, the physical silver stayed up at around the same price. Uh, the spreads that all of the uh, wholesalers and the refineries and so on were charging uh, over spot was much higher during that period of time for physical. Uh, so it's the paper IOUs that, that went down. The same thing will happen with gold and silver in this deflationary dip that I'm talking about. But this is all caused because of the chaos of fiat currencies. This is the U.S. dollar index. It's the U.S. dollar's purchasing power measured against a basket of six other currencies, uh, the majority of which is the uh, euro and then the British pound, uh, and, or the Japanese yen and the British pound just after the euro. Uh, so what you see here is from the year 2002, the dollar fell 40%. I mean, that is huge. 40% for the world's major currency against a basket of the other currencies. And uh, then it hit a minimum uh, in 2008 of about 72 on the, on the index. Uh, and... If you look at uh, just in mid-2014, it was at 80, and then it soared to 100 in less than a year. Uh, so that is a, tw you know, 25% of uh, this 20 points is 25% of 80. So it gained 25% in purchasing power in less than a year against these other currencies. This creates absolute chaos. It creates a nightmare for business. Import and export, it means that they can't make nice solid plans going out into the future. So the, the chaos of fiat currency cripples our prosperity. We would be much more prosperous if we had a stable currency such as gold, but we don't. So uh, we, we measure gold in a fiat currency called the U.S. dollar, and this is gold measured in U.S. dollars. And what you see here is a peak back in the year 2011. And then uh, it's been in a, this cyclical bear market uh, ever since, in, inside the secular bull market that it's in. And we're seeing um, a, a channel here that it's been in uh, since 2013, and it's going down. And uh, the minimum here uh, was put in uh, just in last uh, July or August. Uh, but if we start looking at gold in other currencies, this is gold in euros. And the minimum was back in late 2013, and it has been rising ever since. So gold is doing its job. It's doing what it has always done. Uh, here it is in the Canadian dollar, and the minimum was actually back in uh, mid-2013. It's been rising ever since. Here it is in the Aussie dollar, 
again, the minimum was mid-2013. It's been rising ever since. So it's back into a bull market, basically, uh, in, in these other currencies. And in the Japanese yen, you can draw a trend line across the bottom here, and it hasn't broken that yet, which means that it never went into a cyclical bear. Uh, it is still in this big, secular, 15-year-old bull market uh, and and basically, you know, we've had a, some chopping sideways, but it hasn't broken the uptrend yet. So it's still in a bull market measured in yen. Now, here are some of Nick Laird's charts, and he took it into some of the more obscure currencies. Uh, and what is interesting is gold is setting record highs in these currencies. So gold is is doing its job, doing what it always has. And if you look at the Russian ruble, for instance, uh, back here in uh, 1994, um, you've probably got uh, gold at uh, 100 or something like that. And here we are up at 70,000 today. If we look at it in the uh, Kazakhstani Teng, uh, here we're setting record highs. Again, this huge uptrend, but record highs. Uh, Colombian pesos, the same story. The uh, Belarus ruble. Uh, same story, record highs right now. Um, the Brazilian real, uh, record highs. The Indonesian rupee, uh, it's been going sideways for the past couple of years, but still, it's gone from uh, uh, less than 2 million to over 16 million. Uh, here we have the Syrian pound, and we're uh, again at, up at record highs. Uh, the Moldavian lu. Uh, and Moldovan Lou, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, and, you know, near record highs, but still tremendous performance from gold. Uh, the Turkish Lira, and if you look at this, I mean, it's really hard to see what it was at in 1994, and here we are up at 3,500. Um, and the Iranian Rial, uh, again, record highs, uh, Argentine peso record highs and performance, you know, we're up at 11,000 and down here we were probably at, at 500. Uh, the South African Rand record highs. And what causes this? The chaos of fiat currencies. When Nixon ended the Bretton Woods system, it introduced the foreign currency exchange, the Forex. Uh, currencies didn't float against each other and change value against each other every day like they do now. Uh, bef when we were on, when we were connected to gold, the Bretton Woods system connected all the currencies on the planet to gold through the U.S. dollar, and that stabilized all of the exchange rates. They were fixed year after year, and so when it came to international trade, business people could make plans going years out into the future. Well, if you make plans back here in uh, 2012, 13, and early 14, and then the dollar changes by 25% in, in, mean, in the meantime, that could determine whether your business is going to be profitable or bankrupt. Uh, and it's all at the whim of uh, foreign currency traders. What we see here on the U.S. dollar index, it fell a whole 40% from the year 2002 to 2008. That is just an enormous change for such a short period of time. So the foreign currency exchange uh, causes a wealth transfer from one country to another. Uh, fiat currencies are a way to, for countries to um, manipulate and regulate and manage wealth. They can uh, uh, do uh, trade restrictions. Uh, they can do capital controls. Uh, so it's a way for uh, countries to sort of enslave us, uh, to keep us from moving our wealth from one spot to another on the planet. When we used gold, uh, gold was an international currency. It didn't matter if it bore a country's name on it or not. It had a value everywhere on the planet. And so the last chart I want to show here is uh, not gold measured against currencies, but gold measured against the, some of the markets. Uh, and the purple line here at the bottom, this pinkish purple line, uh, is the NASDAQ from the year 2000 when it peaked uh, to today, and it's still down.
just slightly after 15 years. And this is not inflation adjusted. If you adjust this for inflation, you would still be sitting on huge losses if you were invested in all the tech stocks of the NASDAQ. The blue line here is the US dollar index uh, against, uh, you know, I'm measuring things against gold here. And it's still down, but if I had started this chart uh, back during one of these peaks where it was at its high, it would be down by the same amount that it's above the zero line back here. So the dollar is sitting on significant losses of purchasing power. Um, and then the green line is the S&P 500 index, so the largest uh, 500 largest companies in the United States. And it's up 35% uh, or so from where it was in the year 2000. But then you take a look at gold. And, you know, even though it peaked in 2011 and it's down, it's still the best performing asset of this century. And uh, it uh, has protected, it's doing what it's supposed to do. It has protected people's purchasing power. So I'm going to be appearing at the Silver Summit uh, in, in San Francisco on the 23rd and 24th of November. And I'm going to be giving the most comprehensive economic outlook report and the and gold and silver report that I have done in several years. And so if you'd like to see that, you know, please, uh, first of all, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. But if you want to see these, uh, the videos of the Silver Summit in San Francisco, go to uh, my website, goldsilver.com, and subscribe to the free weekly newsletter and you'll get access uh, and, and alerts when this is available. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.